In this video, we are going to set up the basic interaction for interacting with our door. So in the previous video, we got our door class set up, we have everything set, and we have the basic functionality to open and close the door. But we have no way to actually call the toggle door function, and that's what we need to do. So if we head over to, uh, let's see, our begin multiplayer character dot h, what we're going to try to do is, or what we're going to do is create a function that whenever we press E, it sends out a line trace or a raycast, whatever you want to call it. And that raycast is going to return us whatever we hit. So if we hit a door, then we are going to go ahead and cast it to the, well, if we hit something, we're going to cast it to a door and see if that's successful, which means we hit a door with our raycast. From there, we're going to go ahead and call toggle door. So let's go ahead and create that function. So what I want to do is do it right above all of our uh, shooting related stuff. And I'm just going to make a function called void interact and create the implementation. I'm going to go ahead and move this up just below are on fire function right there. Next up, we need to actually set that input. So if we look here, we have our fire function input bound. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it again, and I'm going to change where it says fire to interact. And the function that it's going to call is called interact. Now, the only thing we have to do now to make this functional is set up the input inside of Unreal Engine. So if we head over to settings, project settings, input, drop down the action mappings, we'll go ahead and delete the VR related one. If we can click the plus to add a new one, and we gave it the name that we passed in the string right here, or the F name in there, and we're going to bind it to whatever key we want. So in my case, I want to do the E key. I want to select E. Then I'm going to do a save all, and we're good to go. So now whenever we press E, this function will be called. Next up, we need to perform the line kit, the uh, line trace. So what we're going to do is set that up. So get world line trace single. It will do by object type. That should be the simplest one. So what it does is it takes in several parameters. So one is going to be uh, a reference to a F hit result. So let's create that F hit result, hit result. That's going to be the first parameter. Then we need the starting location and the ending location for that line trace. So to do that, we're going to create a starting location, which is an F vector. Start location equals. And what we can do is we can get our camera components location. So get first person camera component. What is it? It's like get component location. Oh, I completely missed it. It's get component location. And that's our start location. Now we need to get our end location. So to we have our starting location and to send out in front of us from that start location, what we have to do is figure out the rotation, so we take our, uh, let's go ahead and create it, so F vector, end location, so we take our start location, which is the location of our camera, we're going to add the rotation to it, so in our case it's the get first person camera component, get component rotation, and we have to convert that to a quantum turn, I can't really pronounce that word, and then we multiply it by the distance that we want it to be, like the length that we want the ray to go out. So this is in centimeters, because that's the units that Unreal Engine uses. So I'm going to convert centimeters to, uh, I guess, feet, because, you know, I'm American. So I can get a rough idea. So if I want it to go out by, let's say, eh, we'll do 8. So 243, we'll do 250. So we're going to multiply it by 250. And there's our end location. OK, what are you complaining about? Oh, derp. 
we uh, convert this to a vector. Sorry. So we convert our component rotation to a vector. So now we can pass in our start location and our end location. And we need basic parameters. So we want to do things like ignoring ourselves. So we have F collision object query params. F collision object query params. I'm just going to call it OBJ query. Well, that actually works out with the renaming object query params. Here we do dot. Okay, we do not do the ignore in here. That is in the other one. So we can actually just leave that as an em well, empty. So we're just going to do F collision object query params and call the constructor. Like so. Next up, we have the F collision query params. So we do F collision query params and call it query params. So we do add ignore actor. The actor that we want to ignore is ourselves. So we pass in this. So when we send out the line trace and it hits something, we don't want it to hit ourselves. We want to just flat out ignore, ignore us because we're the ones sending out the line trace. So that's going to be our next parameter. And I think that's pretty much all we really have to do. So if we would look at the return, it returns true if any hit is found. So we're going to wrap this in an if statement. So if all of this, anything in here will be running only if an actual hit occurred. So what we're going to do is try to get that object and print it out. And that's all going to be stored inside of the hit result. So what we can do is if, let's do a door door, all right, we need to include door.h. So come up here, separate these a bit. We just do hashtag include door.h for our class. Go ahead and just minimize things that aren't really necessary currently. So if a door equals cast, and what we're going to cast is to the type a door because this is a template and the object we're trying to cast is hit result dot get actor so we don't have to check if actor is a null pointer or not cast will do that for us and if it returns something that's valid meaning it casted successfully to a door door will be valid so what we can do is door toggle door and compile and I do want to move this into a separate function to uh, just to kind of make it a little bit easier. Well, we might do that. I'm not entirely sure. But pretty much uh, the function would take in a location and rotate, or a uh, starting location and an end location. And it would just return the hit result for us. So let me restart the editor. And whenever we press E on the door, well, while we're looking at it, it should hopefully open and close the door for us. So I walk up, I press E. All right, it played the wrong animation there for a second, but that's due to how we have it set up. But yeah, it is currently working. So let's look at our uh, door class. So if the door is open and the closed animation is valid. Ah, I see. So by default, the door, uh, the way we have the setup, we're just going to set door open to true. It's not too big of a deal. It's still going to work the same, but it'll just prevent that annoying little jump where it thinks it's open so it plays a different animation. With that set default, I mean to true, now it should just be open, close, open, close. It's kind of backwards right now, I think. So I want to print out the value. So UE log, 
Oh wait, dirt. It's because we're doing uh, the opposite, or we're switching it beforehand. So what I'm going to do, set this back to false by default. I don't know why I didn't think of this. And where we set our door's value, we're going to do it after we play the animation. So we're going based off of the current value of the door, playing the correct animation for it, and then we change the value. So this will allow it to work as intended. So true for B door open means the door is open. And false means the door is closed. So it's false, now it's true. It's false, now it's true. Simple. So for the most part, we have our door set up. However, now we can start working on the actual multiplayer implementation. So if I do this on the client, door opens, but there's still collision here even though the door is open. So if I close it, everything's, you know, how it should be. Same thing with the server. However, the server thinks it's open, so the server's going to walk right through the wall, or the door, like so. Because on the client, the client thinks there's a door there. That's why it had that little stutter. But then the server, you know, it's open on the server's end, so it said, hey, there's no door there. I'm just going to go through it, uh, that area. And that's how it goes. So we're going to be setting this up first with a multicast. And then I will go over why that is probably not the route you're going to want to go with a actual door. And for the most part, it's generally easier, if you can, to use on-rep events instead of multicasts. But I'll explain those reasons in the next video when we actually start doing our you know, multiplayer implementation of the door. Right now it's just all done locally. So we we're able to interact and that is good. So next up, uh, yeah, we'll do what I just said. We'll start on the multiplayer and give, start giving explanations. So as always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in my Discord server that is also linked down there. As always, I will see you in the next one.